So as I was saying, I'm going to talk about, uh, like, kind of do a very quick review, go briefly but thoroughly. <laughs> that doesn't make sense, does it? Briefly but thoroughly. So I'm going to go very quickly but thoroughly through every single thing that I talked about that day. And, and let's do it like this. And, uh, and then we're going to do the quiz. So we're going to have around half an hour of going through all the good stuff. And then we're going to go through the, the quiz. Um, it was suggested in the other day, in the other class, that what if we po shift the quizzes one week back? Because you have the lecture, yes, you had the le le lecture yesterday, and you have the quiz today, which means if you were all very good students, it would have been nice, and you would have actually gotten very good marks because they're very close. But um, um, it was suggested to move the quiz for the lecture that I'm having to next week. So you have eight days for it. Do you think, I think, I don't know, short-term memory is a beautiful thing. So, <laughs> so um, again, think about it. At the end, I'm just going to see the possibility. We have like three more quizzes left, not too many, right? Three, four quizzes. So uh, think about it. Think about it. Anyways, next uh, uh, time that you're coming in, we're going to have qu a quiz on uh, virtuality and, okay? Whatever we talk about next time. So virtuality and. So today, no virtuality, no virtual stuff. And let's bring this one in. Have the source full added. At the end of the class, big enough or should I make it bigger? Bigger? Is it good? You can see how you stream over there. All right. So we start with any questions, people, on whatever we talked about or anything you might need to know. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions one? Any questions two? OK. Uh, the, um, you know that the quiz is um, in person. So well, for whoever is listening to this and, and it thinks that they can actually do the quiz from home, I'll check the IP number. If it's not from this classroom, then all the quizzes will go down the window. So you have to be in, in person. That's, that's the rule for quizzes that we are doing. Yes, sir. No, no, it has to be that. That's, that was exactly the next thing. Thank you. So if you're sitting on a school computer, turn it on. It has to be a school computer because it's, it has to pick up that ID. And over here, I have the capability of looking at your screens while you're doing it. So I can see your screens on my podium. So it has to be school students. Uh, school students. School, school uh, computers. Thank you for the question. Quiz 12. Yes. One more time. No, 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 not everything. It is good practice to always make your destructor virtual. Yeah, the, the, the methods depends on your design. If you want it to be updatable, then you make it virtual. If you don't want it to make it upda updatable, then don't. And like my lady over here, make sure if you have another computer, you turn that one on too. In case one doesn't work, you can jump to the next one. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's good thinking, yeah. So uh, another thing that, what I want to say, oh yeah, so I was talking about the quiz. 12 questions in the quiz, 15 minutes of time. Three of the questions are walkthroughs. The walkthroughs are simple. 
one uh, blank thing that you have to write the output in, and it's an exact match, careful. So if I'm printing over there A, B, C, A is capital, B is lowercase, C is lowercase, you have to do exactly that. If you are not sure, you can simply copy and paste the, the thing, the, the code. Uh, if it's not a picture, I don't know if I actually, I don't recall if I actually made a picture uh, for the thing or it's uh, text, I don't remember, but anyways. Uh, uh, you are not, when you are doing the, 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 the quiz, the only uh, th thing that is open is your browser for the quiz and nothing else, notepad, notepad, nothing. You are, you're not allowed to open anything up. And for future, if you want something to work on, bring a piece of paper and a pencil. If you want something to take a note down and see what the variable stuff are and things like that, bring a piece of paper and pen. Um, so n no electronics other than that. And your sessions are being viewed by me. So I am looking at your screen as you are doing it. And I may record the sessions. So you need to be aware of this. Um, if for any reason, bad weather, things like that, you can't come, do you let me know? Then I'll arrange as an exception so you can do it from home. But then you need to have your webcam and everything. You have to be on Microsoft Teams. You have to open it up, you have to share your screen with me and all the good stuff that you're supposed to do. Okay, so if any case or if you're sick, if for any reason um, you cannot do it. The next thing is that emergency sessions. If I'm sick or if something happens, I cannot come or there's bad weather or whatever, I don't cancel classes. We move to big blue button. Um, you will see how it is. The only thing that I'm going to tell you on that, make sure you have a work, working microphone uh, on your computer when you are joining online. If. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. It's summer. Uh, none of them is working? Really? <laughs> so, all right. So, yeah. So, do that. And, and many times I see that. Uh, and to, uh, yeah, people take the plugs out to put their computer in, yeah, and, and also uh, take a look at the back of your thing to make sure that it's plugged into internet too, because some people remove that one too to connect them. Uh, anyways, so we're all good hopefully, right? Okay, any questions about a quiz? I was saying that, and Greg interrupted me. So 12 questions, 15 minutes, three of them walkthroughs, there are the rest of them multiple choice stuff, uh, yeah. So uh, if, if anything goes uh, uh, um, after the thing is done, I, I think Tuesday morning it becomes all the answers and everything becomes available. Take a look at it. I designed the questions, so 90% there's a mistake in there. Take a look at it, see if I made a boo-boo, maybe the answer, I didn't flag the, uh, the answers correctly, and also uh, the questions and stuff are ported from my old question polls on old Blackboard to Blackboard Ultra. So there may be some things happening over there. So please uh, make sure that you uh, double check everything. Now, any uh, concept questions? Uh, everybody's good? All right. All right. So. We talked about lots of good stuff. The very first thing that we talked about was uh, let me let me put this one away. Yeah, so I'm just going to bring uh, every uh, everything we talked about one by one. We are NBB, so the animal is the first one. So uh, to, to start everything, we started with, a, with uh, the class animal. That, there was nothing special about that animal other than uh, I taught you guys how to do global stuff. If you want to make an object global, how you do it, that's, that was the, the important thing. And we said, uh, um, like every function that you have, you can have a variable be visible to all files in your project. Doing so, you, to do so, you need to have that variable in one file and one file only, created in file scope. File scope is what we called incorrectly in C language, global variable. 
you make it file scope, then in a header file of that file, you make that variable's type and name only extern. That makes it visible to all the files. And we said, I use the ex exact same strategy for my utils uh, uh, thing, uh, uh, my utils uh, uh, class to be, able to be able to be available everywhere and make it extern. So ut is essentially the uh, instance of my utils class that is instantiated in the utils.cpp and it is being uh, globalized, if I can call that, in uh, the utils.h. Also, there's one thing that I did not, uh, that I forgot to mention. Um, did I mention how, how to do proper commenting for your, for your functions? The standard way to do commenting for your functions is that open Visual Studio and put three slashes at the top of the function. One, two, and three. Poof. It uh, expands an XML document at the top of the thing and you put the summary over here what the function is doing. So it's is alpha. So in here it says, I'm going to say returns true if the, if, if a character is alpha uh, numeric, or oh, if it's alpha numeric. Okay, so that's that. So, and, um, and then the parameters, you explain what the parameters are. So I'm going to say in here, the character, the character to check, and in here, uh, True or false? Okay, doing so whenever you hover over the over the function, it gives you the help that reads from the XML file, so you can easily see what your function is doing. So in here, so if I use that is alpha anywhere, it tells me exactly what it does. For example, this, the SDR copy over here, it says copy source to destination and null terminates the destination. If I use that anywhere in my application, for example, here I can bring it over and as you see, it shows exactly and parameters, destination is doing this, source is doing that, len is doing this, and I, and I put everything over there so it I, tells you exactly what. So it's a very good way to document your functions. Um, if you do it as I uh, explained, I would really appreciate it. Pardon me? Yeah, and it tells you exactly, yeah, and, it, and it's, uh, but one thing you have to remember, I'll answer your questions in a second. One thing you have to remember, this is an XML format, which means if you want to Put things like, uh, let me just explain over here. You see in here, uh, for this one, for example, I want to say uh, my string compare less than zero. If S1 is for less than, I cannot put the less than. You have to put an HTML ampersand LT semicolon to show the less than. You follow what I'm saying? So in this, what you write over here is XML, and you have to follow XML rules which means special characters are not shown. You have to use their code. Yes? So, uh, the yeah, so it ampersand essentially says ampersand LT semicolon means less than. And ampersand GT means greater than. These are all XML tags. You can find them, list of them, and you can find the list of all of them if you are using them. Yes? So what was the slash? Three, three slashes. Three slashes before, like, you see this string copy over here? I put it over here, and I'll go three slashes. And in most IDEs, this is supported now. One, two, three, and poof, it comes up. And it, show, and it puts proper things exactly for, for the names that you put. All right? You were asking? A top, top, top. So I'm not going to do this now because it's going to take time, but uh, that's what it is. I would appreciate it if you did that for my functions for utils and do a pull request, I'll merge it <laughs> if you like to help. If you don't have extra time, then don't do it. So that's that one. That was the only thing that we had with this animal thingy, and it, the animal was actually used to teach 
how the thing works, how uh, inheritance works. So I'm going to add the second one that actually explained what inheritance is, and that was cat. So we mentioned to actually create a, uh, a class out of another one, and essentially the object-oriented way of reusing your code. We said a structured way of reusing your code is to reuse the functions you have written. In C++, we do re we reuse our code uh, in an object-oriented way, which is essentially reusing design. So if I have an animal and I want to create a cat out of an animal, I'm going to say the cat is an animal. So public over here says that this, this, this column public essentially means this class is, an, is uh, an animal that has extra stuff. Then you add whatever additional things that you have in the class and you can actually build the class and it, and it gets all the features of the class that you have. If you, do, if you do not want to modify the features of the class, simply do not implement them, like the move that I commented in here, which means a cat acts exactly like an animal. Whatever the animal does, it's that one. If you want to completely modify it and just change it, then you can override that function, like act. And when we look at the source code of act, we'll see that the act of the cat is literally ignoring what an animal does and completely re-implements the feature of acting. And as you see, the act over here says act playful, whatever, yada, yada, yada. Okay, this overriding, so we need to know the terminology for it. So if, if you hear that a derived class has a function with the same signature of the base class, you always say the derived class's method shadows the method of the base class. Shadows the. So the action of shadowing have already been taught to you in C language and C++ where you had an inner scope, a variable, it had a variable with the same name at an, as an outer scope, and we said the inner scope shadows it. This is the same thing. The function of the child shadows the function of the parent with the exact same signature. If you choose to modify, but not change, <clears throat> modify, uh, the action of the parent, you can simply call, do whatever additional things you want to do in the child, but call the function of the base. <clears throat> How you do that, you put the name of the base, scope resolution, and you call it. Like that, you can explicitly call the function of the parent. In the notes, there is something called using, they say in the, in the class you write, using, uh, animal scope resolution sound. If you do like that, it means I, any place I'm saying sound, it is the sound of the parent. Don't use the child. I don't like that. That's hidden logic. That's shoot, to me, that's shooting myself in the foot. Because um, unless you're 100% sure that is necessary, I do not like to use something that without looking at it, I can say 100% sure what's happening. Yes. One more time. Mm -hmm. Yes. If they are identical. But if they, one is overload of the other one, then it won't. Different, they're completely different functions. Got it? Okay. All right. Are we good? Are we okay? And obviously, in an inherited class, you, have, you can add additional methods that did not exist in the parent like play. <clears throat> the constructor of uh, the inherited class can choose to call any constructor of the parent in the initialization area. We said the initialization area is where the closed parentheses of the constructor is, right to the open curly bracket of the body of the constructor. That's the initialization area. Anything you do in there, any initialization you do over there will initialize the uh, information inside the 
uh, the class. That has nothing to do with inheritance. You can do that with a regular class that is not inherited. If you want to initialize parts of a class, you can simply go to any constructor of the class and do the initialization. The initialization that is in line within the definition of the class supersedes this one, which means that happens first, this happens next, and then setting begins. So anything you do inside the constructor, it's not initialization anymore, which means when constructor begins to execute its body, that at that time, the object is fully allocated in memory with information inside its parts, either garbage or initialized. Okay? So whatever you are doing, you are overwriting the information inside your class. No more initialization. That's that. You can again call any construct, invoke, sorry, calling is a very bad name to say. You can invoke any uh, constructor in the initialization area and decide how to uh, run the thing. And later you'll see that you can even invoke another constructor of the same class. So, for example, in, in, if, I, if I want in the default constructor to call the two, two argument constructor, I can actually do that. Don't do it, but you can. Okay? Um, so that was that. That was, that was the syntax of inheritance. And again, uh, no. Now we know how it works. Any questions down to this point? Questions? No? Nope. All right. Next was, so let me just close everything in here. That was beautiful, but the problem with what we had over here was that, as we said, in an object-oriented in an object-oriented uh, application, whenever you refer to a child using the parent's reference or pointer, the child forgets being a child and becomes parent. It does everything as parent as if the child doesn't exist, as if this object is not uh, inherited. This might be what really we want, but there is one problem with this and one problem only. The problem is that if you do such a thing with dynamic memory allocation, you are doomed to have memory leak. So although we understand that if I actually have reference of an animal over here holding the uh, being uh, alias of uh, a cat, I know that when I use AR, it turns back to becoming an animal that's not a cat anymore. But if you use an animal pointer creating a, a, a cat without any reference to the cat, then there are, you have no handle for that cat but the animal pointer. And when you try to delete that cat, obviously there's going to be memory leak because compiler has no way to know what is it pointing to is actually a cat. To overcome all these things, we introduced virtuality. We said, if you want to guarantee that the latest version of a, we said that if you want to guarantee that the latest version of a method is called what you need to do in the base class, identify the things you want to be updatable as virtual. They are all optional except destructor. Destructors must be virtual at all times to guarantee that there is never possibility of memory leak because of dynamic memory allocation of a child in a parent's pointer. Therefore, destructors from now on, you make it virtual. Methods, you make them virtual if you want them to be updatable, if you want them to always uh, get executed as the latest version. If you don't want to, you just don't, don't make you don't you don't make them virtual. Having something like this guarantees no matter how I look at a child, a child is always will be uh, the child's action will always be called. So again, virtuality guarantees that the latest instance of inheritance action is always invoked no matter how you are referring to it. Because of this fact, for virtuality to be even considered 
as being active or not. You must have a child being pointed or referred to by a parent. Other than that, you don't even need to think about virtuality. It's dormant and it doesn't do anything. If I have a base class, in a base class as a reference or a pointer, who cares? It's the same class. There is no inheritance involved over here. Therefore, uh, virtuality doesn't count. If you have a child being pointed by a child pointer or a child reference, again, no virtuality because inheritance is not involved. Inheritance is implemented but not involved. The Always remember, when you are dealing with a pointer or a reference, the closest action to that pointer is desired to be called unless it is virtual. So if I have a pointer of an animal, always the methods of, the, of an animal wants to, wants to get called, unless they are virtual, and so on and so forth. Uh, questions now to this point? For all kinds of uh, destruct, uh, uh, destructors do that because you never know if 10 years from now you want to inherit something from that class. Okay, so you just apply it all the time. You just apply it all the time, regardless of if it's inheritance, if it's going to be inheritance involved or not. You don't care. So two things you need to do. First of all, when you create a class, no matter if you need rule of three or not, you will have a destructor. So if you don't need a destructor, just create a destructor and make it empty. You put an empty body for it and make it virtual. So no matter what, you must have a destructor and it must be virtual. That's what you need to do from now on, no matter what. Yes? Sure, add it, no problem. No, no. no. So again, remember, these are milestones. Milestone one, two, three, four. The reason we are not marking them and we only need their uh, timely submission is that they are supposed to be updated as you are going forward. The only thing that is marked is milestone five. So anything you do, you can change it. Absolutely no problem. Modify your code, do whatever you want to do. As long as you have a successful submission before the time, it means you are in a timely, you are uh, doing stuff in a timely manner, and because of that, you get your 10%. You keep making it better and change it to the end. There is no problem. If you look at a project, it's the same thing. Like I've go, I went through the project and I, when I got the date and I said, oops, like this, I cannot test the application. We need to have the date to have this and this and this and this. So I ask you to modify the date in milestone, I think, two, right? Or three, in milestone three. You will see I'm, go, I'm, I'm gonna put the tester up soon. I actually tested it and my tester crashed, so I have to see what the heck was wrong with it. So as soon as it's done, uh, I'll post that one too. So milestone three, four, and five, I, I put version 1.0, it's wrong. They're actually per version 0 0.9 because none of them are final. As soon as I uh, open, up, open them up for submission, that's where are final, okay? So as you are playing with it, if you successfully finish it, don't think that it's done. As soon as uh, I open the submission, look to see if anything has changed. And diff is your friend. Diff is your friend. You can always go on uh, uh, Git uh, on the browser and simply click on a thing and diff it. It shows the previous version now. So if anything is changed, you won't miss it. So that's that one. So we were talking about virtuality at this point, and we know that virtuality is good to make the latest version of something is called. But virtuality is not only for that. Virtuality is for planning ahead too. When you think something should exist in a class in future, that's where virtuality comes in play uh, in a very nice way, okay? We mentioned in this animal thingy and said, in reality, when you are actually creating an animal, you cannot say how an animal may act, uh, sorry, how, how an animal uh, makes a sound. It's impossible. Depending on what type of animal you have, the animal has different type of sounds that it makes, right? Because of that fact, we cannot implement the, the sound. But we need the sound. If this scenario happens where your class requires some action, but you don't know how, that's a pure virtual method. A pure virtual method is like a regular method, but it's something that you enforce the descendants of that class to actually implement it 
unless they're going to be abstract too. So when you have a pure virtual method, that is a method that points to, uh, is set to zero, you are telling to the compiler, this method is supposed to exist later. It's not going to happen now. And because of that, the compiler will not allow you to instantiate that class anymore. If the descendants of the class that has pure virtual method implement it, life is beautiful. If they don't, they are abstract too. So you can still create descendants out of this one, but leave the pure virtual methods unimplemented. That just makes the abstract, makes the abstract base class that is actually an abstract derived class now a better implementation of the previous one, but still incomplete. And that's that one. And what I mentioned at the end was that uh, there is a, there is a, um, the, the, uh, there is a, a standard way of calling an abstract base class that has only pure virtual methods and nothing but pure virtual methods that is an interface. So whenever you have a class and all the methods of the class are all pure virtual methods, so it means this class has no implementation at all. The class is just an instruction of what to do next. These type of classes are called interfaces. They do not exist in C++. C++ doesn't know what is the difference between an interface and abstract based class. For, it, for C++, they are just abstract. One is more abstract than the other one. It doesn't make any difference. So we don't have an interface in C++, keyword interface. But if you're programming in Java, you'll see that you actually have interface, okay? In C, we don't have it. In C++, in C++ we, uh, all, anything that has pure virtual method is considered to be an abstract based class, and that is that. Questions? Suggestions? Objections? That was a quick uh, review of what we have done last time. Um, uh, now if you want to go take a break, five minutes, come back and we'll do the quiz. And then we can go home. I'll pause the recording if you have any questions on unpause it.